All right, welcome into another edition here of the FanDuel Hurry Up. I'm Joe Ranieri, joined by Jim Sonis of Number Fire, and no better time than the present to start talking a little NFL division winners. And uh, is there any value on the board? Well, we'll certainly cover it with Jim here, figure it out. And why don't we start, Jim, with uh, well, at the very top? And it's a division that a lot of people have had some questions about. Uh, it, but some people think it's a two-team division, but what do you think when you're looking at the NFC East for a division winner? Yeah, I think that I'm kind of in the camp, too, where it is a two-team division, given the concerns that we should have about Washington and New York. I think it really is between Philadelphia and Dallas. And both these teams right now are plus 125 at FanDuel Sportsbook. So honestly, you could just go both if you think it is a two-team division. But between those two, I do have a slight preference for the Dallas Cowboys at plus 125 to win the NFC East. They are losing both Byron Jones and Travis Frederick. And those are pretty big losses, but the Eagles also have their own losses. Uh, they're going to be moving to Andre Dillard at left tackle instead of Jason Peters. And they haven't really addressed the wide receiver position as much as I hope that they would. So a slight preference for me with the Dallas Cowboys returning a lot of the pieces that led them to have number five, second schedule adjusted ranked offense in the entire league last year. Dak Prescott, Amari Cooper both back. We should see their their tackles at least back and fully healthy once again this year. So it was a disappointing year last year for Dallas, but and they do lose some key pieces, but I still think the pieces that they have returning are good enough to make them a good value plus 125. But like I said, if you think that Philadelphia is that team, I think they're on the same par here. But the overall, the overriding theme for me in the NFC East is I think it's really down to Dallas and Philly. I am okay with either side, but I have just a slight preference for the Cowboys here. Interesting enough, you know, the uh, the Philadelphia Eagles, the only team in that division with the same coach, coaching staff, a lot of new faces going to be on the sideline there in the NFC East. So it'll be interesting to see how it all pans out. And not so much, of course, in the NFC North, where I think everyone has already circled one team, kind of penciled them in. Uh, that being the Green Bay Packers. What are your thoughts on the end, uh, the NFC North? Yeah, I kind of went into this offseason expecting to be off of Green Bay because last year they overperformed their record pretty much the entire year. Their record was a lot better than the advanced numbers around them were. And what that says is that they'll likely regress in the upcoming year. So I go, went into this offseason expecting to be down on Green Bay relative to consensus. But I think this number at FanDuel Sportsbook is pretty appropriate. They're plus 165 to win the NFC North. And it's interesting because this division, I think, has taken a hit because the Vikings did lose Stephon Diggs, traded him to the Buffalo Bills. They do have two first-round picks now, but it's hard to replace Stephon Diggs with a rookie. And they also lost Everson Griffin on defense. We have concerns around Chicago's offense. And then Detroit is coached by Matt Matt Patricia, hard to be really optimistic about that for sure. So I kind of think the Green Bay Packers, despite the fact that they are due for some record regression for next year, I still think they check in as a, as a bit of a value at plus 165. We saw Aaron Rodgers play some good football at times last year, even with a really poor supporting cast around him. He does lose Brian Balaga, but that defense brings back most of its key players, and they could add to the weapons that Rodgers has to work with via the draft. So I think it's still a time to buy Green Bay. I wasn't expecting that to be the case, but with this number being where it's at, at plus 165, I think that Green Bay actually does wind up checking in as a good value bet to win the NFC North. Yeah, expect Green Bay to do a lot in the draft to address those uh, those skill position uh, spots there, certainly on the outside. Got to give Rodgers some weapons to be able to take advantage of. and. Speaking of weapons to take advantage of, he hasn't had them, well, pretty much ever. When you take a look at the NFC South, uh, the Tampa Bay Bucks and Tom Brady, he's got a few weapons out there to uh, throw to. How do you think that division shapes up, Jim? Yeah, it's a really interesting division because you have the Saints, obviously, at the top end, a loaded roster across the board. Atlanta should have some better injury luck this year than they had last year. And Carolina is, I think, better than people thought they would be as well because it does seem like they're going to be trying in 2020. So not an easy division, but I think we're still underrating the Bucks with Tom Brady in town here. And a lot of the reason that I think we're underrating them is because we don't appreciate how good their defense was last year. They ranked fourth in schedule-adjusted overall defense based on number fires metrics. 
They did just resign in Dominican suits. So he'll be back there to join Jason Pierre-Paul and Shaq Barrett. So the catalysts of that good defensive ranking last year will be back in town for 2020 as well, on top of having a really athletic linebacking core. So the, the key pieces that led that defense to be good last year are back in place. Now you upgraded Tom Brady at quarterback. Now Jameis was not a, a bad quarterback by any means, but going to Tom Brady from Jameis is a is an upgrade, and it should improve the outlook here for Tampa Bay, Tampa Bay, but they're still plus 175, and I think that number is just a little bit longer than where you would like it to be. The Saints, again, like I said, they're a very good team, but now they have less depth at quarterback with Teddy Bridgewater being gone. If something happens to Drew Brees, once again, they could be in some trouble for sure. Atlanta's defense still a big question mark, as is Carolina's. So I think this is a good time to buy into Tampa Bay still. I don't think this number will be as long as plus 175 once we get to week one. So now's the time to dive in. I think there is still some good value on the box, even though people have been pretty aggressive with them in betting markets since Tom Brady signed on. Yeah, at 432, I'm sorry, at 43 years old, he's still getting an awful lot of love, that's for sure. <laughs> How about the NFC West? Uh, of course, the 49ers, uh, that was, was all about the 49ers last year in this division, but Russell Wilson certainly not going anywhere. Uh, the Rams, uh, Arizona's improved. This, uh, you know, all of a sudden now is a very, very interesting and competitive division. What are your thoughts on the NFC West this year? Yeah, I think competitive is the right word because all four teams are, like, viable given the improvements the Cardinals have made so far this offseason. But I think we're kind of forgetting about the Los Angeles Rams. They're plus 350 right now on FanDuel Sportsbook, and I think that's a pretty good number and helps account for the issues that this team does have. And I think the big issue for them is going to be their defense because they have lost a lot of key players defensively, but they help make up for that a bit by having Aaron Donald and Jalen Ramsey on the same team for a full year coming up this year. And I think we're kind of forgetting how good those two players are. They can make up for a lot of holes all by themselves. Then you look at the offense. Obviously, there were some pretty major struggles at times last year for the Rams offense, but they reshuffled their offensive line prior to week 11. And from week 11 on, Jared Goff averaged 0 0.20 expected points per dropback. That was up from 0.08. Prior to that, so a pretty big deviation from Jared Goff, and he was a top 10 passer over those final couple of weeks when they had their offensive line reconfigured and kind of shifted their scheme to account for the personnel they had on the offensive line as well. That offense, despite losing Todd Gurley, the key pieces are still intact. Uh, that offensive line will be healthier than it was last year because they had a lot of guys go down due to injury and now have uh, a competition at several key spots, which they did not have last year. Also getting Andrew Whitworth back at left tackle, that's a good thing. And as of right now, all three of their key wide receivers are back as well. So I think this Rams offense is going to be good once again in 2020. The question is whether their defense can be good enough to support them in a divisional run. And I think that's a very legitimate question. But when you're getting them at plus 350, given that they were just in the Super Bowl two years ago, I kind of think that accounts for their imperfections. So I do want to buy low on the Rams. And I think this is the best route for doing so, betting them to win the NFC West at plus 350. Rams made a lot of win-now moves over the last couple of years, so let's see if it can all pan out for them. Should be a fun division to watch for sure. And we'll take a look at a couple of AFC divisions. And uh, one thing that I can tell you I've not heard about, and I think this is a good thing, in the AFC North, I haven't heard a damn thing from Baker Mayfield or the Cleveland Browns, Jim. That's got to be, well, that's got to be a good sign, isn't it, in the AFC North? Yeah, I think the good thing is the, the, the Browns are making improvements, but they're not necessarily getting like major headlines for it. And I think that's good from a betting perspective, because last year when they, they made the Odell Beckham and Olivier Vernon trade, it got a lot of headlines and it made them a tough team to bet because the public was so high in them. But given what happened last year, we're not seeing that right now. The other reason that we're seeing the Browns be a little bit lower on the totem pole is that we have the Ravens as well. The Ravens deserve to be the, the favorites in this division because they're going to be really good once again next year. But the Browns secretly making gains. They added Jack Conklin and Austin Hooper on offense. They're both expensive, but the Browns still have a lot of cap room to negotiate with. And they could add a left tackle in the draft as well. That'd be a good offensive line once again if they could address that one position. On defense, they get Miles Garrett back. Uh, their defense hit the tank after Garrett uh, was suspended last year. It's a big re-addition. Olivier Vernon missed a lot of time due to injury. Denzel Ward, Greedy Williams, those guys were hurt last year too. So I'd expect this defense to be pretty solid given that they have all those guys coming back for next year in addition to Odell Beckham and Jarvis Landry. So 
depth is still an issue with the Browns. And that's a big part of the reason why they did not play well last year is because when guys got hurt, they didn't have pieces to step up. And I think that's going to be a concern for the Browns for a couple of years now until they can build this thing back up via the draft. But if you look at the starters on this team, the starters represent a team that is much better than would be indicated by a mark of plus 460 to win the division. Again, the Ravens need to be the favorites in this division because they are very good. They've made some pretty major gains this all season too. So they should be the favorites, but at plus 460, I think the Browns are a little bit undervalued and I'm looking to, to buy in here, given that, like you said, the hype has not been quite as big this offseason as it was last offseason. New coach, too, Stefanski. See what he brings to the table. So far, you got to like what you see there from the Cleveland Browns in that division. All right, and finally, let's take a look at the AFC East, who, let's face it, Tom Brady is gone. Uh, the Buffalo Bills are on the rise. Miami Dolphins on the rise. Uh, people are sticking a fork, of course, in the New England Patriots. What say you, Jim, about the AFC East this year? Yeah, I think it's a pretty wide open division, which presents us with some good opportunities from a betting perspective to take some longer shots and bet on a team that may not seem super obvious. And they're not super obvious for a reason with, with Adam Gase being their head coach. But I think that's the Jets at plus 750 because the Patriots right now do not have a quarterback. You know, they have Brian Hoyer, Hoyer and Jared Sidham, but that's not really a competitive quarterback room if you're trying to win a division. And they don't have a lot of cap space to change that right now. Picking 23rd in the draft, that's not a place where we're going to get a win-now guy like Joe Burrow or Tua Tunga Vailoa. So I don't expect them to turn around that all-important position anytime soon. The Bills in theory, have a quarterback, but I think there's a lot of question marks about him, too, because Josh Allen last year ranked 27th in expected points per dropback. So although we talked him up quite a bit, the advanced numbers around Josh Allen were still not that great last year. So I think that that's a little bit of concern if you're trying to bet the Bills, but the Jets have some parallels to what the Bills did last year, specifically around the offensive line, because they have not, they didn't make a big splash play. They haven't brought in any big name free agents along the offensive line, but they brought in competition at pretty much every position. They didn't add Connor McGovern. That's a pretty big upgrade for them at center, which was one of their biggest weaknesses on the entire roster last year. And they brought in other guys who can compete for a spot potentially with the 11th overall pick in the draft as well. You kind of throw stuff at a wall, see what sticks there along the offensive line, they have Jamal Adams back next year. C.J. Mosley played only two games in his first year at the Jets. He'll be fully healthy as well. So I don't think the Jets are a great uh, a great option if you're picking things straight up to win the AFC East. But they're plus 750 in a division that seems to be kind of wide open right now because I'm not as sold on the Bills as some others seem to be. So I think it's a good division to take some long shots. Maybe you're more enthused about the Miami Dolphins, uh, which I think is interesting as well, given the, the Byron Jones edition and some other moves they have made. But I'm going to side of the Jets here at plus 750, given the slight upgrades they've made along the offensive line, the com competition they can brew along that, uh, along that ever-important position mark. And I think that that bodes well for them. So we'll see what happens, but I think it makes sense in the AC East to take a longer shot. And I prefer the Jets there at plus 750. Love the way you're going there. I think the draft for all of those teams in the AFC East uh, going to prove to be vital on how they go from there. So there you got it. You got some uh, division value moving forward here in the NFL. Want to thank Jim Sonis of Number Fire. I'm Joe Ranieri, and that does it for us. It's been another edition here of the FanDuel Hurry Up. Be well. Good luck with your day.